Hey, how you doing today? Thanks for joining me. In this series of videos, what I want to do is walk through the steps necessary to do tap conductor calculations for electrical installations according to the 2015 version of the Canadian Electrical Code. So first, what we need to do is define the difference between a tap and a splice. When we talk about a splice, what we're actually talking about is the combination of two or more conductors that are the same size, whereas when we refer to a tap, we're actually combining multiple sized conductors under one termination or a lug with multiple terminal points on it, but we have different sized conductors terminating on that same point. So, in the electrical world, it's very common to have taps and tap conductors, and what we're going to focus on in this series of videos is sizing tap conductors for taps that are coming off of splitters into overcurrent devices. So, the first one that I want to talk about is not specifically dealing with a splitter, but it's in the code book in section 14, rule 100, item A, deals with the downsizing of a conductor when we are using a voltage drop calculation, something like that, where we have a long conductor used for reducing the effective voltage drop and we downsize kind of at the end towards our load uh, to a smaller conductor. Now, one thing I should point out in 14100, what it states is that any time we decrease the size of a conductor, we are required to have overcurrent protection on that conductor as soon as it is decreased in size. I'm also allowed to decrease a conductor after an overcurrent device as well. So for the first one, 14100A, we're going to take a look at what do we do with that. So 14100A, okay. This rule allows us to, if I have an overcurrent device, and we come out to a junction or a tap in this case out to we'll say we have a 12 amp load okay we're going to run with a 15 amp overcurrent to protect our load okay well ideally our conductor and we're to kind of get away from the whole voltage drop thing we're going to run a number 10 conductor a number 10 aug which has more than sufficient ampacity to handle the 12 amp load but we're doing this again just for voltage drop now at this point here, this is what we're going to call our tap, which makes this downstream, this is now our tap conductor. According to code, we are allowed to downsize this conductor without overcurrent protection at this point. If we went down to say a number 14 gauge conductor, this is allowable without the overcurrent device on that decrease in conductor size because I am sufficiently protecting my smaller conductor with the overcurrent on my larger conductor. Okay, so this is the first in a series of videos describing um, steps taken for tap conductors where we don't need to add that overcurrent for uh, decreasing conductor size. So thank you for watching and stay tuned. Next video we'll take a look at 14100B where we see tap conductors coming out of a splitter. Thank you.